Okay, so uh, I don't think I need to introduce uh, Professor Stuart Anderson very much, but I'm sure he'll tell you who he is and where he's from. But Stuart's going to um, give you a presentation around the development of, uh, from the conceptual model that Andrea highlighted into the self-assessment tool and the journey that we've taken. Um, so that's going to be that session. And then following on from that, we're actually going to start looking at how we've used that tool to assess the maturity of healthcare systems. And you'll hear from some of the regions that have tested it and what their findings were. So over to you, Stuart. Thanks very much. I'm Stuart Anderson. I'm uh, from the School of Informatics at University of Edinburgh. And Christina, Alexandria and I have uh, been involved in the design and implementation of the actual tool. Of course, today should be the focus on the model, not really the tool. Yeah, the tool is a way of accessing the model and, and building it into processes in one way or another. So I'm going to give you a very quick, uh, quick run through of uh, the issues around the development of the tool. What I will say is that this was mostly driven from interaction with the partners, with the, the health system partners, as we iterated and developed the processes. And the processes that we've used actually have, have changed quite significantly with each iteration that we've done. And I think we're getting towards stability now, but it's actually it's been a very interesting journey. And of course, I mean, the first thing to say is this is a King's Fund picture of the English NHS, yeah? and. Um, they're very complex organization. NHS UK is the fifth biggest organization in the world. It employs 1.7 million people. And getting any kind of change in something of that scale is enormously difficult, and even trying to understand it. So what the, uh, what the model gives us is a framework for analysis. So it's a particular framework for analysis around integrated care. And so we looked at this. I was quite involved with Andrea in, uh, in the EIP on our B3 group. And uh, we did a lot of interviews. We got the, the model that looks like this. And then the first thing we thought was, OK, let's digitalize the model. Here it is. Yeah, so now you can drag and drop. You can, look at the, uh, you can look at the scales. And you end up with something that you've already seen. You see a lot of these today. You end up with a spider diagram that kind of shows you the shape of your health system in terms of its maturity for integrated care. And OK, are we done? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe in some way had some kind of crazy idea that this would be it. But actually, no, because. Nobody has a full view. You know, if you look at it, people are siloed in, organ in complex organizations. They don't talk to one another. Uh, everybody has their own perspective on a complex organization. And so everybody kind of carries around their model. Yeah. So the first thing we had to do is to work out an ownership model. And that took two or three goes. So there is actually a kind of super owner of a particular, uh, particular questionnaire result. And then there are people who can write to it. And then there are people who can read it. And then there are people who can't see it. So there is kind of a, basically a model as to how people share things. Yeah. So here, uh, this is my assessment, and I want to keep it confidential right now because I'm still working on it, or I want to share this with this group, but not that group, and so on and so on. So we had to build an ownership model. So there is an ownership model in, in there, yeah. And then uh, there's the issue about combining views, because perspectives are important, and people have very different perspectives on health systems. And actually, one of the most important things about the, uh, the B3 model is it gives a framework for those kinds of discussions. The discussions between people with competing views or with different views or who have different perspectives. And actually highlighting that and allowing people to have that, that discussion is one of the key aspects, I think, of the whole, B, the, the whole maturity model idea. And so we built this idea where actually you can overlay uh, assessments. So you can lie assessments. They come up in different colors. And then the dark line in this one is the agreed line, because what you're, what you're permitted to do when you combine these things is you can create a consensus assessment, which is this is the consensus. And we've had various goals at how, how to help promote consensus, had various little master's projects doing things. Some of them have been disastrous, and some of them have been better. But, but then what it allows you to do is it allows groups to kind of consolidate their ideas and even you can you can pyramid these. So the very first time uh, we tried this, I got a phone call from from Sweden, from Norbotten, saying, "How do we get this to work with 12 people?" Yeah, uh, because the overlay doesn't really work above six. Yeah, it's very difficult. So we said, "Okay, split into two groups." Yeah, uh, and um, 
and then combine, yeah, build their, uh, their assessments and then combine the assessments. I was doing this on the train to Durham and when I got off the train, I left my jacket and everything else because I was in conversation with Lisa <laughs> and my jacket went to London <laughs> with all my cards and everything else in it. So I had a delightful first experience of using them. Um, and then uh, this was in, in working with uh, Flanders, actually, I think. Uh, we realized that actually, well, there were a couple of reasons why we did this, but actually the, there, are, there isn't one, quest, one assessment. There's actually a timeline of assessments. And you can uh, move backwards and forwards. It's not fully implemented in the tool, but it's there in the underlying model. So you can have, this is my assessment at the beginning, and then this is how it looks in January 2017, October 2017, and right now. And as you can see, unfortunately, there wasn't much change from um, from one to one in this particular example, but I was cheating a bit because I just used the same icon again and again. But uh, <clears throat> but you can think about revising views. And then we started to look at good practices. And we said here, if you look at this, there are two diagrams lying on top of one another. One is a blue one and one is a yellow one. And if you, you think the blue one is the good practice requirements, what the good practice requires from the health system. And the yellow one is what the health system can give it in terms of each of those dimensions. Then you can see that along um, structure and governance, there's maybe a bit of an issue because the good practice gives more, more demand in that area. So we started to look at, say, well, what's the process to support this? And we ended up with two different kinds of assessment. We ended up with a good practice assessment, and we ended up with a, with a health system assessment. And then you can combine these and actually build a discussion around that. So all along the way, we were looking at building standard processes to support this, to talk about reaching consensus, looking at evaluating the maturity requirements of good practice, matching maturity requirements to health systems, and then moving, moving on looking at training and coaching, looking at what happens when you compare health system maturities, looking at exploring good practice maturity requirements, and using the dimensions of the model to focus the discussion. And uh, we know, uh, it, the, the thing is, I think this, these things operate at whole loads of different scales. So it is possible to look at subsystems, you know, so if you look at that massive subsystem on the bottom left-hand corner of the, uh, of the overall uh, NHS thing, then maybe you can do a, a subsystem assessment there and that will help you with, with that aspect. But the summary is the core conceptual model is agreed, clear, simple. Lisette has done lots of work on assessing it, yeah, and it's pretty stable. The tools, yeah, we need to retain that as much as possible. And I think where we've got to, we've had a journey, and the tool is about as complex as it can get right now in its current form. Uh, we need to step back, re reassess it, and actually go back to a little bit more of that conceptual simplicity. And we think we have ways to do that while keeping the capability that it's got at the moment and using it as a platform to develop further. Yeah. But we need to take into account the sorts of processes people follow and how to support that. And so the tool needs to have ways of working with the conceptual model, but it's distributed, it's multilingual. We've translated it into, I think, four or five languages. Uh, it's a complex environment, and it's a distributed environment. And I think that's one of the most important things about it, because it doesn't need everybody to be in the same room all the time. You, there can be quite a lot of dialogue goes on outside of the room using the power of the internet, actually, to achieve that. And then when people come together in the room, they can have a more constructive conversation and discussion. And that's, the, that's where we are with the tool. Uh, so that's a whistle-stop tour. I think this is probably about, you'll see the tool being used, but this is probably about the only bit that, that is the design driver on it. And mostly, it's about how to facilitate dialogue, how to facilitate interaction around a particular assessment. And that's it. Thanks very much. Okay, so uh, that was, a, as Stuart said, a very, very quick introduction to the development of the tool. And hopefully all of that will make much more sense as we move into the next session where 
we hear um, mm -hmm. from uh, five different regions about how they've used the tool um, to assess their own uh, maturity uh, within their region. So they'll give a little bit of context. But before that, I think we have Christina. So she's just going to take us through that. Sorry, I've leapt ahead a little. Sorry, Christina. Yes. So Christina is going to give us just a little bit of an overview of the tool, and then we'll move into how those regions have applied it. Sorry, Christina. So hello, my name is Christina Alexandra. I'm also from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, and today I will make two short demonstrations of how to use the tool for different aspects. Uh, so I will start with assessing the maturity of healthcare systems using the tool. First of all, we recommend following this process. So consisting of four steps. In the first step, local organizers identify local experts to be involved in the assessment. Then the experts need to individually perform the assessment by using the tool. Then they share their individual assessments with the organizers. And finally, the organizers set up a workshop to discuss and reach consensus amongst the different experts about the maturity of their healthcare system. You can imagine that when selecting experts, you can end up with quite a multidisciplinary team, so people who have different levels of ex expertise and experience. Let's take an example where we would have a doctor, a nurse, an information technology specialist, and an administrator. Each of them needs to perform an individual assessment. For this purpose, they need to open uh, a maturity assessment page on the tool. Uh, and this allows them to either fill in a form provided on the left-hand side here, or interact directly with a spider diagram on the right-hand side in order to enter a rating for each of the 12 dimensions. For each rating, they must also fill in a justification uh, provided uh, so um, in the box underneath the, the rating scale. And finally, they need to save. You can imagine that because of their differences, uh, each of the stakeholders in this example may end up with quite a different diagram, reflecting their own perspective of their, the maturity of their healthcare system. Before going further, they need to share their individual assessments with the organizers of the future workshop. To do this, as soon as they have saved the individual assessment, they have a share button that they can access uh, and get to this share assessment page. Here, they can use the text box at, at the end of the page in order to provide the email address of the organizers and just click share, which will add the, that email address to the table above to confirm that the organizers were, um, that, that the assessment has been shared with the organizer, so the organizers can view it. When they are meeting in order to negotiate and reach consensus, the organizers can again use the tool. So they can go to the consensus, they can the different individual assessments and click on compare and enter consensus, which would open up this consensus maturity assessment page. Here they can see on the spider diagram that different individual replies as underlaid, so represented in different color and put one on top of the other. And in the legend, the different colors are e explained and they can click on the different colors, on the different names of the different labels to open up the individual assessment if they want to. Um, so this way they see how the points of views have differed. They can also see at how the justifications of the different individuals have differed, which are represented in the, above the justification box, again using the four different colors. To enter their consensus assessment, they again need to interact either with the form or directly with the diagram, as they do for an individual assessment. And this time a, a black line will be created for representing each of their uh, rankings. So let's say we had this overlay diagram when they first opened the page. You can see from here that not everybody agreed on all of the dimensions, on the ranking for all of the dimensions. In particular, if we take the example of standardization and simplification, we can see that somebody had selected a higher ranking of three. It was the information technology specialist who explained in his justification, we are all using HL7 Fire. However, two other users, the doctor and the nurse, say yes, but getting the devices to interoperate is a nightmare. The administrator, however, thought that the rating should be somewhere in between. And he explains, this will all be resolved soon as we are joining an international standards group for devices. Through discussion during the meeting, they can decide that the IT specialist was too optimistic and the nurse and doctor were too pessimistic about the rating and therefore go <coughs> with, the, media, with the, the middle ground provided by the administrator. And they can record this decision by using the consensus form. Uh, so whenever, when, uh, as soon as they enter their decision, so such a discussion needs to happen for all of the dimensions where there wasn't initial consensus. 
and they will end up with a final consensus diagram represented with the black bar here. And this is just a short run through how um, a maturity assessment can be done using the Sirocco tool. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, that's how it's done.